The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Even when we are quite alone, how often do we think, with pleasure or pain, of what others may think of us, of their approbation or disapprobation? Those are the words of the great naturalist Charles Robert Darwin. It is humbling, it may even be humiliating, to recognize how dependent we are upon the smiles and frowns of other people and how agonizing it must be when we are separated from them, unable to read their expressions, when we are quite alone. I'm all by myself. I'm alone. There's nobody here. Nobody in this room, nobody in this place. Nobody in this world but me. Am I here? Am I somebody? Who am I? Who'll tell me who I am? Our mystery drama, The Solitary, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Larry Haynes and Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and contact the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There's a word we use quite loosely and carelessly to designate certain persons generally considered to be idiosyncratic, if not downright peculiar. The word is loner. It's of some passing interest, I think, to note here that the dictionary contains no such word. That marvelous book lists and describes, however, the hermit and the recluse and the one who gives our play its title, The Solitary. Oh, it's cold. Cold, cold. No moon, no stars. All dark. It's dark. What's that? Dorothy. That's it. That's it, Dorothy. Give me a hand. Oh, oh, a snake. Watch out for the snake, Dorothy. Uh, hey, the snake's gone up the tree. The snake is gone. It's gone up the tree. Here, here, Dorothy. Hold out your hand. I want to give you something. You'll see. I've solved the whole thing. Hold out your hand. Oh, oh blood. There's blood on your hands. You've got blood on your hands. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's very, very bad. It's all right. It's all right. I'll do it. It's the only way. And what's that? The birds. The birds. All those birds. Help. Oh, the birds are taking over. Get the birds. Somebody get the birds. Get the birds. Hey, hey, hey. Why? Why? The birds are eating everything. The birds, they're eating everything. Wake up. Wake up. No, no. No, no good. No use. They're big, big birds. Come big, on now. Big, Come big, on. Wake what? up. What? what? Oh. Oh. What is it? Oh. You've been dreaming. What? Come on. Wake up. It's breakfast time. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Breakfast. Such as it is. Oh, yeah. Hey, um... Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was... That was a dilly, that one. The dream? Yeah. I was, uh... Walking through this uh, kind of a forest with with this girl, and it was dark. There was no moon or anything, and we were lost or something, and and uh, I forget. But it was cold and it was dark. I remember that much. It was uh, it was just like in here. Well, it's pretty dark in there, all right. Go ahead, eat up. Oh, uh, there was a snake. It went up a tree. Do snakes do that? Go up trees? Some of them do, I think. Yeah, well, this one did, and, and then, uh... It's funny, I think I remember, and then I can't. 
Well, don't think about it. Eat your breakfast. Don't think about it. Yeah, okay. Oh, crumbs. Yeah, breadcrumbs. I had some breadcrumbs in my pocket, and, and I gave some to her. Uh... No, no, I, I wanted to give some to her, but her hands... Her hands were all bloody. They were full of blood, covered with blood. All right, take it easy. Take it easy. Eat your breadcrumbs. Yeah, I took the breadcrumbs, and I, and I started throwing them on the ground, and, and then... Uh... Oh, God, yes, and the birds, the birds came and started eating the crumbs. Thousands of birds, millions of them all over, dashing themselves down on the ground and eating up the crumbs. And I knew it was hopeless. Well, what was? Oh, everything, everything, absolutely everything. Eat your breakfast, huh? Hey, what, what does it mean? There was a dream. Does it have to mean something? Well, they, they say dreams do. Dreams have meanings, if you can figure out what they are. Well, you know, it sounds to me like that, uh, that old fairy tale. What was it, uh, Hansel and Gretel or something? One of those, you know. The uh, two kids who were lost, and they uh, threw crumbs on the ground so their parents could trace them. You know, they were leaving a trail, but the birds came and ate up the crumbs. Oh, is that what happened? You remember that story? Yeah, I, I guess I do, yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. It's been a long time. Feel better now? Yeah, I do. I really do. Thanks a lot. So, go on, eat up. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Don. All right, then eat. I will, I will. What's the weather like outside? It's nice. Very nice. Sun shining? Yeah, shining like crazy. Is it hot? Yeah, but uh, there's a little breeze. It's very nice. I walked all the way up the hill. Oh, you did. That must have been nice. Yeah, it was. Come on, eat up. Huh? Uh, okay. Hey, how are the Reds doing? They've got a good chance. Oh, I've always been crazy about the Reds. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I grew up in Cincinnati. Yeah, I know. It's a great little town. Oh, you know Cincinnati, Don? I didn't know you knew Cincinnati. I was there a couple of times. Well, not really there. Across the river, a place called uh, Fort Thomas. Oh, huh? uh, you finished? Give me the plate and the cup. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think maybe tomorrow I can sneak you up some oatmeal. Would you like that? With milk and sugar? Yeah, I like oatmeal. Then maybe you won't dream about breadcrumbs, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'll see what I can do without getting caught. No, don't get caught. Hey, Don. Yeah? Don, how, how many days I've been in here? Seventeen. Seventeen. Thirteen more to go. Oh, Don? Just a second. What's up, Carl? I ought to ask you that. Oh, yeah? You mean something by that, or are you just looking for trouble? You were in there quite a while. Five minutes. You call that quite a while? Seemed like it was longer than that. Yeah, to you, maybe. You've been hanging around, which you have. A little hooky-dooky, maybe? What's that? Five minutes is long enough for a little fooling around. Broder, I ought to knock you flat. Take off your glasses, now, Will. Hey, come on, take it easy. You're only kidding. You're too sensitive, Higgins. I have a message for you. Warden wants to see you. He told me to tell you. Is he in his office? I believe he is. I believe he's waiting for you right now. Come in. Oh, hello, Higgins. Close the door. Broder said uh, you wanted to see me. I did. I do. Sit down. I'm not going to beat about the bush, Higgins. It's the... It's, it's about the guy in solitary. Yes, sir. I understand you've been spending some time with him. I can guess where you heard that from. Never mind where. From Carl Broder. I just saw him. He made some pretty lousy insinuations. He didn't have his glasses on. Don't not... pay any attention to him. He's got a foul mind and he's stupid. Well, just the same. Next time he take opens... Take it a... easy. Take it easy. Cool off. The prisoner's in solitary because he hit Carl. After throwing his food tray out. Oh, Carl must have said something to him. Now, your duties call for you going to the hole twice a day and leaving the requisite amount of bread and water. That's all you're supposed to do. Lady, go pick up the cup and the plate. That's all. You're not supposed to hang around while he eats. Now, you know that, Higgins. 
You've been here long enough to know that. Yes, sir. So, why don't you do what you're supposed to do? Why this infraction of the rules? A man in solitary is supposed to be solitary. He's not supposed to be shooting the breeze with a guard. A warden, this man is a first offender. Pretty serious offense. Assault and battery. Beat up his girl. Well, she cheated on him. He was in love with her. She cheated on him. She's still in the hospital. Did you know that? Yes, I know. And that's why I... Did you ever ask about her? No. And that's a funny thing. <laughs> oh, very funny. Very funny. Uh, he's blocked it out. It's as though it never happened. What the heck does he talk to you about? If he doesn't talk about her, what he did to her, maybe he thinks he never did it. Maybe he thinks he's innocent, like all the other characters. In no, it. no, no, he doesn't think he's innocent, but uh, sometimes it's like he thinks he's a child or a boy or uh, a very young man, adolescent maybe. He has dreams. They're like fairy tales. He talks uh, about baseball, the weather, things like that. It all sounds harmless. It is harmless. But it's against the rules. A warden, he's trying to hang on to, to, to reality. I guess you'd call it that. Uh, the outside world. He, he's all alone. He's in the dark. He's got uh, nothing but himself and his thoughts, his feelings. That's what solitary is. Being alone with yourself. I know that, but some men can't stand it. And this is one of those men. Don? Yep. Here's your ration. Is it still nice out? It's all right. Sun's still shining? Yep. Hey, quite a spell of good weather we're having, huh? Hey, hey, where are you going? Are you leaving? What's the matter? What did I do? Did I say something? Did I do something? I can't hang around. Well, why not? Did I do something? You don't like me. Is that it? I did something wrong. Is that it? Well, it whatever easy. it is, I'm sorry. I never meant to do anything. I didn't mean it. No matter what it was, I didn't mean it, and I'm sorry. Well, you take it easy. You didn't what, do anything. I didn't. I, are you sure I didn't? Uh, are you sure? Will, will you quiet down? Yeah, I will. I will. I will. You see, I'm all quiet. I'm quiet now. All right, that's better. You know, the trouble with me, I can't sleep. I mean, I, I mean, I sleep about, uh, I don't know, five, five or ten minutes at a time. Sometimes two, I can't tell. And I dream, and, and then when I, I wake up... Hey, hey, Don, you're not leaving, are I you? I've got to. Uh, Aren't you going to light a, a cigar, smoke a cigar? I can't. But you have before. You said it relaxes you. I know it relaxes me. Just just smoke one cigar, huh, Don? But, but just part of a cigar, will, will you, please? Wow. Well, I'd li I like, I like to watch it burn. Huh? Okay. <sighs> Is that better? Yeah. It's so dark in here. You think I could sleep? You think I'd do nothing else but sleep? But it doesn't work that way for some reason. I think, I think maybe my nerves would be better if I could sleep. Hey, Don, you're not leaving, are you? Aren't you going to stay and smoke the cigar? I know. Oh, no, go please, on. please don't go. I, I, I want to ask you things. Please, don't go, Don. I'll tell you now, why. Just stay for, for a little while and smoke the cigar. Don't go. Don. I got to go. I got to. But I'm going to leave my cigar, okay? I wish you wouldn't go. I told you I got to. But look, I put a cigar right here on a crossbar. See it? Yeah, yeah. You can see the tip, can't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to smoke it, you know. No, I won't. I won't. I'll just watch it burn. Okay, then. Yeah, it'll be... It'll be like a nightlight. I'll have a nightlight. And I'll sleep. The terrors of being alone start very early in life. Consider the tiny infant when the mother has bent over the crib and kissed her darling. When she has walked that huge, commanding and protective figure to the door, opened it, passed through it and closed it. The helpless being in the crib has no sure way of knowing that she will ever, ever return. I'll continue with Act Two shortly.
there have always been those who chose isolation, like the hermit monks from the early Christian martyrs, some of whom survived without going mad. But our story concerns a modern man who has had his isolation forced upon him, one who is trying to save himself from madness. Listen now to the second act of The Solitary. Wake up. Breakfast. Oh, oh, you. I'm passing it through. Yeah, thanks. Sleep all right? Oh, yeah, fine. Hey, what's it like out, the weather? Sun shining? Yep. Oh, it's been nice lately, the weather. Hey, you're not going. Got you. No, I, wa- I wanted to ask you about, about the Reds. How they doing? I told you yesterday. Yeah, you said they, they got a good chance. That's right. Even without Maroney, you said they traded Maroney. Hey, don't go here, Don. I, I want to thank you for leaving that cigar here last night. I certainly appreciate That's that. That's all right. You know, I stared at it for, uh, uh, tell you the truth, I don't know how long it was. First thing you know, I'm asleep, and then it's morning. And I, I really appreciate what you did. I, I was getting a little crazy there, no sleep, you know? Yeah, sure, I know. You, you ever go very long without sleep? Uh, not for long, no. Because they say eventually you do go to sleep. I mean, nature takes over, and you, and you just, uh, you just go to sleep. We, we don't need as much sleep as we think we do anyway. That's what they say. How much sleep do you need, Don? Oh, about eight hours does for me. Yeah, eight's about right for most people. Yeah, well, uh... Hey, look, you're all strung out, man. Why don't you try taking it easy? No, 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 I'm not strung out. I'm okay. What makes you say I'm strung out? Well... You're all right? Certainly, certainly I'm all right. Good night's sleep, certainly. I'm all right. Well, only, do you have to leave, Don? Can't you stick around? I really can't. Oh, Don, uh, one more thing. Just just one more thing before you go, okay? Oh, what's that? Uh, you think I got any mail? Mail? Mm-hmm. You don't get any mail in solitary. Oh, I know that. Certainly I know that. Only, I, I thought if there was some for me up in the office or wherever they well, keep it... Well, what good does that do you? Just, just to know that it's there... I'd, I'd like to know what's there. After all, I'm going to get out of here sometime. It would be something to look forward to. You know what I mean? Well, who would you think you might be hearing from? My mother? I'll tell you what. I'll try to find out for you. Yeah, would, would you, Don? Oh, man, I'd appreciate that. I really would. I would certainly appreciate that. Don't mention it. Uh, uh, and, Don? Yeah? You're not mad at me, are you? No, you're not going to start that again, are you? Well, I, I have this feeling like I've done something I shouldn't have. You did something you shouldn't have, all right. Yeah, but I knew it. I, I, I knew that. Now, tell me what. Tell me what I did. I have this feeling I did something. Now, mister, you beat up a lady. You clobbered your girlfriend. Yeah, I know. I know. I know I did. But I'm, I'm paying for that, Don. I'm in jail for doing that. And you're doing 30 days in solitary for trying to clobber a prison guard. Yeah, I know. I assaulted Broda. Man, why did you do that? I I, I I don't know. I forget why I did it. That's one of the very worst things you can do here. You know that. Now, why did you do it? Did he say something to I don't, you? I don't know. I forget. Just all of a sudden, I was hitting him. You know, you're not really such a violent fella. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I am. I beat up on my girl. I beat up on Broder. No, Don, don't go. Don't go. Please, now, don't look, go. Look, I, I got to. I'm not supposed to be standing around here shooting the breeze with you. It's against regulations. The warden doesn't like it. He told me so. Yeah, yeah but alone, all by myself, nobody here. It gets to feel like there's nobody but me in the whole world, nobody. And then I, I start to think, am I here? Am I somebody? Who am I? Will you, will you tell me who I am? I can understand that. But I gotta go anyway. Uh, I'll be back this afternoon. You sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. So, uh, take it easy, huh? Hey, who's that? Oh, Broder. What do you want? Thought this is where you'd be. Now, what do you want, Carl? The warden wants to see you. The warden? Is he in already? I just walked up the hill with him. He wants to see you in his office right away. Ah, all right. Run along. I'll say flock to you. Okay. How you doing in there? I'm doing all right. Lonesome? I'm all right. Can't quite see you, but you sound all right. I'm all right. Listen, how, how are the Reds making out, do you know? The Reds? Mm-hmm. Those bums. They're way behind. I thought they had a chance. Who told you that? 
Oh, I know, I know. Who told you that? Well, I, I was hoping to stop hoping. They're way behind, can't catch up in a million years. What's this? What's what? Is this ashes? Where? Where? What? What ashes? On the crossbar here. Looks like cigar ashes. Now, how'd cigar ashes get here? You've been smoking, for heaven's sake? No, no, no. I, I, I don't well, know. Who was smoking around here? Somebody give you a cigar? No, no, no. Nobody gave me anything. Then who was smoking? Nobody, nobody. I'll find out. I'll find out pretty damn quick. Guard, you got a flashlight? Yeah. I hand it over. Nobody's gonna smoke in solitary and yeah. get away with it. There's gotta be a butt around someplace unless you ate it. Is that what you did? You ate it? I wouldn't put it past you. Come on, move over, move over. Butt's gotta be here someplace if you didn't eat it. Move over, get in the corner. Hey, hey, hey. You got water on your glasses. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it had to be here. Listen, why have you got drops of water on your glasses? Because it's raining, stupid. I got soaked walking up the hill. It's not raining. The sun is shining. Oh, it is? Yes, it's a very nice day out. How would you know? Hey, now, wait a minute. Let go of it's me. It's nice out. The sun is shining. Let go. It's been nice out for a long it's time. It's raining. It is not. It's been raining for two whole days. You're a liar. And it can't... It is very nice out. You... We have had a spell of you... very good weather. You busted my glasses. I'll get you for this, you crumb, if it's the last thing I do. The sun is shining. It's been shining for several I ought days. I to beat you up. I ought to give it to you good. You want to mix me up? It's very nice out. What did I tell the warden, you creep? You'll get another 30 days in the hole, maybe 60. Man, you never learn, do you? It's very nice. It's not really raining. It's very nice out. The sun is shining. It's not raining. It's against the rules, Don. What more can I tell you? I know, Warden. I don't know how it happened. It was just that he seemed so Don... I, I don't know, helpless, like a kid, sort of. He's only 22. It's his first time in the plank. Makes no difference. He I, was... I was just trying to be friendly, that's all. That was a mistake to start with. Solitary is punishment, Don. We're not supposed to make it pleasant. Well, now you know it can't ever be pleasant. What went on between you two? What did you talk about? Oh, nothing. Anything. It's mostly the weather. He always wants to know about the weather. I don't know why, but he's crazy to know about the weather. Every day, it's what's the weather like. Is the sun shining? Is it nice out? So I tell him, that's all. That's all. Well, it seems to cheer him up if I tell him it's a nice day, that the sun is shining, that uh, there's a breeze, the birds are singing. So, I tell him that. Even if it wasn't a nice day, I tell him it is. Makes him feel better. What else do you tell him? Well, he comes from Cincinnati. He's interested in how the Reds are doing. Not too good. Yeah, I know. But I make out like they have half a chance. And that perks them up some, so every day I make their chances a little better. I think they're in last place. Yeah, they are, but uh, a man in solitary, does he have to know that? Warden, it's nothing. Five minutes twice a day, it's nothing. Nothing to you, maybe. Who's that? Warden, I gotta see you. What is it, brother? He did it again. That guy in solitary took a poke at me, broke my glasses. Close the door, Carl. Sit down. Tell me what happened. After I told Don here you wanted to see him, I said I'd safe lock the place and he should go to see you. And Don left. Why didn't you leave? Well, I was going to. And then I see something on the crossbar of the cell. I see ashes. Ashes? Cigar ashes is what they look like. That was... Uh... I think to myself, somebody's been giving this guy cigars. He's been smoking in his cell. No, he wasn't smoking. I get a flashlight from the guard outside and I go in the cell, start looking for the butt, the cigar butt, and I find it. He don't deny it or anything. I mean, he don't say it isn't him. It wasn't All him. he says is, what's wrong with your glasses? They got water on them. And I say, very nicely, certainly they got water on them because it's raining. And he says, it's not raining. And I say it is, but he keeps on, and there's words and one thing and another, and he takes a poke at me, breaks my glasses. Creep breaks my glasses. Don, you know anything about this cigar? It was mine. What was your cigar doing in that cell? I left it there last night. On purpose? 
The man couldn't sleep. It, uh, he said it'd be kind of like a nightlight. Nightlight? Well, he hadn't been sleeping well. Nightmares. He was very edgy. How is he now? I don't know. All right, I guess. After he slugged me, I beat it. Well, somebody better get down and check on him. I don't think it should be either one of you, so I'll go myself. You all right in there? I, uh, understand there was some trouble with one of the guards. That right? You slug one of them? Carl Broder? He just came up to my office and told me. I'd like to hear your side of the story if you care to tell it to me. Don Higgins left a cigar in the crossbar last night. He's admitted he did it. To help you sleep, he says. Now, of course, he shouldn't have done that. When Mr. Broder found the ashes, he should have reported it. He shouldn't have gone barging into your cell like he did. That was wrong. But he was just looking for the cigar butt, that's all. You had no call to hit him. You broke his glasses, you know. You shouldn't have done that. It's the thing that got you where you are in the first place. You know that. Answer me. I know that. Well, then. What have you got to say for yourself? Anything? Warden. Have I got any mail? Mail? You want to know if you have any mail? A letter, maybe? From my mother? As a piece of bread to a man who is starving, as water to a man who is thirsty, so is human contact to a man who is alone. We'll return soon with Act Three of The Solitary. A man is stripped of his liberty. His movements are limited. His food is prescribed. His sleep is controlled. His work is assigned. His communications are censored. What more can be done to him? One more thing. He can be deprived of human contact. And that is the final insult that turns him in upon himself. What are you, uh, uh, what are you doing in there? Nothing. I can hear you moving around. Look, I, uh, are you listening to me? Are you? Uh-uh. Yeah. I think you're the warden. That's right. I thought so. Now, to get back to... Um, uh, you asked me, did you have any mail? If you had a letter from your mother. Didn't you ask me that? Uh, yeah, I believe I did. Well, of course you can't get any mail while you're in solitary, but uh, I'll check and see if there's a letter from your mother. Okay. Will, will that make you feel better? My mother's dead. You say she's dead? I think it was last year she died. Then, then why did you want to know if there was a letter? Look, I want to be very fair about this whole thing. But we have to face the fact that you struck a guard. Warden. Yes? Yes, what is it? Are you really the warden here? Well, certainly. Look, regulations say you've got to be punished for striking a guard. You did it once and you were punished, and now you've done it again. Do you know why you hit Broder the second time? Do you? I really don't. I'm, I'm telling you you'd better come up with some kind of a reason, because if you don't... I've got to give you 30 more days in the hole, and I, I don't really want to do that. You hear me? Give me one good reason for hitting Broder, and I'll try to go easy on you. Come on. Think back. What happened? It wasn't Broder's fault. Come on now. 
You don't start a fight with a guard just for the hell of it. You're not a violent man by nature. Uh, anyways, you don't appear to be. Of course, I could be wrong, but I don't think you are. Look, I'm asking you to please stop walking around and talk to me. Will you, for Pete's sake, please do that? What's that? What's that noise? Sounds like glass. Is it glass? Of course, Broder's glasses. Nobody swept them up. Look now. Uh, I'm going to send for a broom and a dustpan, and I'm going to clean up all the glass in your cell. You there. Fetch me a broom and a dustpan on the double. And a flashlight, too. Right. You trying to get this place in an uproar? You, you trying to get me mad or something? Well, you're not going to succeed, Buster. Oh, thanks. All right, Warden. Now stop all that walking around and go stand in the corner, okay? Just stand right there while I sweep up this glass. No, 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 no. I got a better idea. Here. Here, you sweep it up. Come on. I'll hold the flashlight. Come on. Take the broom. Take it in your right hand. Good. Now, start sweeping the glass. You're going to start sweeping now. Start. That's pretty good. I think you got it all. Uh, now, you're going to hold the broom with just your right hand. And your left hand is going to take hold of the dustpan. And you're going to put the dustpan on the floor next to the little bits of glass. That's it. And you're going to sweep the glass into the dustpan. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's good. That's very good. Now I'm going to get rid of this glass outside. And uh, you just... You just try and take it easy. Okay? Okay? Everything's going to be all right. Take my word for it. You just relax. Everything will be fine. Wonder what's going on down there. Warden's checking on him. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just got a quick temper and he's a little too free with his fists. You told him it was raining. What? I told him it was raining. Well, of course I told him it was raining. He says, you got water drops on your glasses. Why is that? And I said, because it's raining out. He says, no, it isn't. I said, yes, it is. It's been raining for two days. And he slugs me. The way I figured, he's got it in for me. Did you tell him anything else? I don't know. He said something about the Reds. Yeah. I thought maybe he might have. What'd he say? Something about how they were doing. They might take the pennant or something. Yeah? What did you say? I said they were bums and didn't stand a chance. Everybody knows that. So I said it. Now, what's wrong with that? Nothing. I suppose there wasn't anything else you could say. Listen, I didn't have to say anything at all to him. I could just have left. But then I saw the cigar ash. What did you have in your head to do a dumb thing like that, leaving him a cigar? I don't know. I don't know. Solitary is a punishment cell. I know it's a punishment cell. What am I, some kind of a beginner, new on the job? If you're going to start babying guys in solitary, where's the punishment? What's the point of the whole thing if you make it a breeze to do time It there? isn't a breeze. It's never a breeze. Wait till you do time there before you talk about it being a breeze. Oh, that'll never happen. I'll never do time. Yeah, well, why not? You're not so pure. You're not so holy. You could make a mistake just like anybody else. I know too much about it. Yeah, that's it. That's just it. You know in your bones that the worst thing can happen to you is to be locked up. Locked up is bad enough to start with, but when you're locked up alone, day after day alone, that's the worst it can get. Nobody to talk to, nobody to listen to, not even a human face to look at, not even a human hand to touch. I think it's probably the worst thing can happen to anybody, any place ever. All right, take it easy. Yeah, you know what that poor jerk said to me? He said it, it gets to feel like there's nobody but him in the whole world. And then he starts to feel maybe he's not there. And then he starts to feel that maybe he's not anybody. You see, there's nobody there. It's not even him. That's why I... 
That's why I started giving them a few minutes of talk back and forth. Yeah, you told them the Reds didn't have a chance. Well, they haven't. What's wrong with that? I've been telling him they did have a chance. For Pete's sake, why did you do that? He comes from Cincinnati. He's a big fan. I wanted to give him, to give him, uh, uh, I don't know, something to root for. Something outside of himself. Something out of the world. Something, something real. Uh, I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know you don't get it. Now, maybe I should have never said it, but... I was grabbing at a little thing, like, like the weather. He liked to have a picture of everything being real beautiful outside. The sun shining, trees, flowers, birds, so I... I kept telling him it was wonderful out. And he believed me. Oh, why not? I'm the big oracle. I'm the big smart man who knows all about what's going on. He's just a little kid who's been locked in a dark closet for doing something bad. And then you come along, you tell him I'm wrong. I don't know anything. Hell, it's no wonder he slugged you. Yeah, it's not my fault. I didn't know anything about that. Ah, I know, I know, I know. I didn't say it was your fault. But I don't think it's my fault either. Or maybe it was, I don't know. Maybe it's right what the warden says. Just go by the rules, forget everything else. That's what I believe. Go by the rules. Only it's a heck of a way to live. Warden? Warden? How oh, is he? Is he okay? I don't know. He won't talk? Oh, he said a few things. Asked about a letter from his mother. He asked me about that, too. A couple of seconds later, he said his mother died last year. Oh, his mother isn't dead. Last year is when he got sent up. He's, uh, weird. No doubt about that. I've sent for the psychologist. But in the meantime, Don, I wish you'd go down and try to talk to him. He knows you're his friend. Maybe you can get some. Okay. Take the flashlight. You, uh, may want to get a good look at him. <laughs> Don. Don Higgins. You all right? I understand the warden was here to see you. He was worried about you. I want to explain to you about a couple of things. About uh, the Reds. They don't really have much of a chance. I exaggerated. Actually, they hardly have a chance at all. But I thought having something to root for is always a good thing, so, so that's why I said what I did. And, uh, that part about the weather, that, uh, that was awful dumb of me. I should never have told you it was beautiful out. I don't know why I did it. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but, uh, it wasn't because, uh, Carl Broder didn't know, and of course when he said no, it was raining. Well, of course then you didn't know who to believe, huh? Isn't that so? Isn't that the way it happened? Come on, talk to me. Look, I'm coming in there. Come on. Don't be like that. Talk. Holy mother. Hey, what's your idea? What did you do? It was a piece of glass, a skinny piece of glass. I don't know how he got it into his vein. Artery. Left cartoid artery. Connects with the aorta, the doctor says. Part of Carl's glasses, huh? My fault. I should have swept up that glass myself. Is he going to pull through? The doctor thinks he will. He got to him pretty soon after he dug the glass into his throat. Well, maybe he did it while I was talking to him. Huh. That's a pretty thought. Uh, you were doing your best. Oh, we were all doing our best. Oh, I, uh, I didn't tell you. There's a letter from his mother. I checked. That's good. Of course, I can't give it to him yet, but there's nothing that says I can't tell him it's there. No, I don't think there's any rule about telling him. 
I hope there isn't. Oh, here comes Broder. Oh, yeah. I just thought I'd stop by, see how he is. He's doing pretty good. You gonna pull through? The doctor thinks so. They told me in your office, Warden, that the girl he roughed up is gonna be all right. Yeah, the hospital called. So he won't get hauled up on a murder charge. Well, that's something. The way things stand right now, he can apply for parole in about six months. After what he did? Throwing his food tray on the floor, oh. slugging me, not once, twice? You think anybody's going to grant a parole after that? Probably not. I should hope not. He ought to be sent back to solitary once he gets out of here. Isn't that right, Warden? I mean, not just for the rest of the 30 days, I mean for another 30 days. Striking a guard, that's serious business. I know that. Well, what do you think you'll do? What would you do? Me? Don, what would you do? It's not up to me. No, it's up to me. Goes with the job. Well, I gotta get back to work. The uh, doctor said I could see him for a couple of minutes. Okay. See you later. See you. Hello. Hello. How you feel? Not too bad. I got a couple of messages for you. One is a letter from your mother. I don't know if they'll let you see it, but uh, it's there. And uh, two, uh, that girl got out of the hospital. You mean that? I got it straight from the warden. I'm, uh, I'm glad you're feeling better. I, uh, gotta get back to work. Don. Yeah. How the Reds doing? Why, uh, why, they won a game yesterday. Yeah, they actually won a game. Uh, you think they got a chance? I think, uh... I think everybody's got a chance. As long as we keep on breathing, everybody's got a chance. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think, too. We all got a chance. I firmly believe that everybody's got a chance, however slim it may be or seem. But that chance is slimmer to the one who is alone. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 10. I'll be back shortly. word, so idly spoken and so coldly heard. Yet all that poets sing and grief hath known of hopes laid waste dwells in that word alone. Edward Bulwer-Lytton, born 1803, died 1873. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Ralph Bell, Fred Gwynn, and Nat Poland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Billy! Billy, come back! Oh, I, I must go after him. Excuse me. Please excuse me. Sandy, I have a sneaking idea that Billy is in love with her. Mm. I've had that idea for some time. Are you for it? How can I be against it? How does she feel about him? I don't know. I don't know where Billy went. What was wrong? Oh, nothing, I'm sure. Well, didn't he like my cooking? Well, of course he did. We all do. You know, I never see your friend Sangali anymore. Doesn't he come here to play the piano? Sangali? Yes, you know, the, the one who cured my terrible headache that day. Yes, we know, Sangali. Listen, Trilby, take a tip from me. It's not wise for you to be interested in him. 
Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by x and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.